So our next guest um, today is actually uh, yes. grown into the, being the author of uh, one of the most influential projects in the PHP community. Uh, I, uh, up there in the Olympus between PHP unit, Xdebug, uh, and now PHP Stun. So please welcome to the stage PHP Stun author Andrei Mirtes. I hope I didn't <laughs> that. Okay, great. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming to my talk. So, uh, I would like to spend a little of time, a little bit of time, of uh, introducing myself. So, I've been developing in PHP since 2005 on projects both big and small. And the reason why I'm talking to you today is because I like pointing out mistakes in other people's code so much that I create a static analyzer to do it for me. And I used to say that I uh, developed PHP Stan during nights and weekends, but it's no longer true because I took it full time earlier this year, thanks to income from GitHub sponsors and PHP Stan Pro. So this is now my job and I'm really, really happy. And I am also really happy to be standing here today because I'm on a live stage for the first time after three years. And also, uh, this was the first conference that accepted me as a speaker internationally. And I was standing here for the first time six years ago. And I didn't know anyone here back then. And now I have many friends in the audience. So I've been looking forward to these two days for a long time. So who uses PHP Stan? A lot of hands, a lot of hands up in the audience. That's awesome. <laughs> and for the for the rest of you, I would like to spend a little while, just a little while on introducing PHP Stan in case you are not familiar with it. So uh, I would like to compare the the situation to compiled compiled languages. PHP is an interpreted language, and on the other hand, languages like C sharp or Java are compiled. So compiled language needs to know the type of every variable before the program runs. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it's not going to let you run a program with an obvious mistake, like accessing an undefined variable or calling an undefined method uh, beforehand. You, your program has to be okay uh, if, if you want to run it. So the compiler runs as a first line of defense before you are able to launch your application. But PHP is interpreted. If you make a mistake, it's going to crash when the line of code is executed. So PHP developers, if it wasn't for static analysis, would spend a lot of time uncovering mistakes that wouldn't even compile in other compiled languages. So uh, this is how output from PHP stand looks like. So it's a static analyzer. It analyzes code without running it. On the other hand, dynamic analysis that's uh, something that happens to an application when it runs. So for example, xdebug is a type of dynamic analysis. But on the other hand, PHP stand is a static analyzer. It gathers data, it scans your, it scans your code base, it makes use of uh, native type hints and PHP docs, and it tries to understand the code. And it looks for uh, all kinds of errors, hundreds, hundreds of categories of errors, and some situations are easy to spot and others are more tricky. For example, some uh, some really bad errors are not even errors considered by by the PHP language. So, for example, PHP does not tell you in these in these example situations that the classes do not exist. So, if you ask about an instance of some class and the class does not exist, PHP PHP simply skips that condition and considers considers it false. If you are trying to catch some exception that does not exist, it also silently skips that condition. If, if, if it even is going to, gen it's going to construct a class name from a name that does not exist. It just going to use, it just looks at the namespace, at the use statements, and it's going to construct something that doesn't, doesn't need to exist. But uh, PHP stand is going to tell you about all of these errors, so it's really useful to have it. This talk is about uh, configuring PHP stand to maximum strictness. By default, I try to develop PHP stand not to be too opinionated about your code. 
So it just tries to give you unbiased and objective report about errors in your code. But it's still less forgiving than PHP, and I hope that it's for useful reasons. So for example, PHP will happily let you call an undefined method on an interface. And the code might be OK as long as you pass uh, object of a type, object of a class that has that method. So this code might never crash in, in the runtime when you are running your application, but it's really dangerous because anyone can implement uh, the interface and not include that method there. So PHP stand will report this even if, it's, if, even if it can be fined by PHP standards. Another similar situation is that when you are trying to add two strings together arithmetically. Again, it might be okay for PHP because the strings might contain something that resembles numbers and the result will mostly, can mostly be okay if you have string that con contains number two and string that contains number three, this uh, function will output five. But it's really dangerous because the string might not be numeric. You might be adding together values that you did not intend to add together. So it's better to have this checked and to use, uh, use different types. So PHP stand will also complain about this. Another difference is that void and null are not the same thing for PHP stand. For PHP, they are because a function that is marked as void is going to return null in, in runtime. If you call if you call a function that returns void and you save the type into uh, the value into a variable, the variable will, will contain null in, run, in runtime. But in practice, this isn't fine by my standards because you are not supposed to be interested in that kind of value. So this is also something that is checked by default, even if it's fine by P PHP uh, standards. All right. Uh, if I want to talk about configuring PHP stand, I have to talk about rule rule levels. So if PHP stand told you everything that is wrong about your code on the first run, it would be really, really overwhelming because you would get tens of thousands of errors and you would uninstall it and you would never run it again. And the point of rule levels is to give you a kind of a gradual, gradual path for integrating PHP stand into your workflow. It's going to show you the most severe error first on level zero. It's going to let you fix them. And then you can start using PHP, PHP stand in your, in your CI pipeline. And when you feel like it, when you have enough time, you can increase the level and fix more errors and so on, so on, so on until, until the highest level. There's, uh, there's, an over, there's an overview of rule levels. You don't have to memorize it. You don't have to. You don't have to care about this. The distinctions doesn't. The distinctions not matter. It. What matters is that it's gradual, and you're supposed to go, one one by one. But what's happening on each level doesn't doesn't really matter. The point is to have, kind of a gradual can, a step, gradual steps into more into more uh, type safe. Uh, types of experience. Uh, with higher levels, you get additional type safety, but the benefit uh, slash cost ratio might uh, get worse. It's similar, for example, to code coverage. Uh, it's really it's really great to go from zero to fifty, but then, from for example, to go from ninety to hundred, you don't get much more much more benefit than that. So it's similar with rule levels, I think. And on higher levels, you might get frustrated if you're not uh, something like a type type enthusiast, because the point of PHP stand is to be useful, to be helpful, to help you find bugs and not make you fight the tool in case of bogus errors. So, if you're puzzled about why PHP stand uh, doesn't like your code, it's okay to stay on lower level and have nothing reported instead of being constantly frustrated and tolerate tolerate it tolerate the build being red instead of instead of green. So uh, eventually, everyone should eventually be running at least on uh, level five. That's where all the essential errors that you can usually encounter in an application are reported. And if you want to have everything typed, then you should be using uh, level six. I added level six specifically because 
uh, without it, you would you could have a false sense of security because you would be you could be using the highest level. If if you just remove all of your type hints from your code, you could be running on the highest level and not have anything reported because PHP then doesn't know anything about your code. So that's why edit level six kind of kind of in the middle so that you are forced to add uh, missing type hints, including what's in your arrays in your code, and. Uh, the big um, kind of a break of point is, be is between levels six and seven, because uh, level seven is more about proving incorrectness rather than correctness in your code, which means that the code might be wrong, but most likely isn't, or in some cases it isn't. So for example, partially wrong union types are reported on level seven. What's a partially wrong union type? So let's say that you have a variable that has either type foo or type bar. And you are calling a method do do something. You want to do something with that object. And type foo has that method, and type bar doesn't have that method. So this is reported on level seven because the code might be correct. It might be that in practice, in runtime, uh, the type, the variable, is only of type foo, but PHP stand has no way of knowing that because that type of information might be encoded only in the developer's head because they know what's the situation and they know that it can only be foo and that you can call uh, the method safely, but PHP stand doesn't know that because uh, there's, not e there's, not e there's not enough information in the PHP docs and so on to uh, have it figured it out. So that's why it's about proving incorrectness rather than correctness, because the code might be might be correct, but it might not. Another thing that's reported on level seven, because it might be correct, is doing basically anything with the type hint object, which was added in PHP 7.7.2, I think. So accessing properties and methods on an object is an error on level seven because the only useful the only useful thing that uh, you can do with an object safely is to clone it and to pass it to another object nothing nothing else it's not it's not a really useful type but it's not reported on on a lower PHP stand level because it's a common mistake and it's not always a source of bugs because for example uh, some ORM libraries or dependency injection containers often use this uh, this type on their on their methods because uh, they don't have a way to um, they don't have to way to um, type uh, more specific more specific type there. So they use object and the developers call specific methods and access specific properties on that object, but PHP then has no way of knowing what's uh, what's the more specific type that uh, should be there. All right, uh, level nine. Is there anyone that uses level nine in PHP then? Okay, <laughs> congratulations. Uh, I am not surprised that uh, not, not a lot of people have their hands up because it's brutal. You don't have to achieve it. Not even PHP stand itself has level nine, so <laughs> not not every code base is up to it. If you deal with a lot of unknown types, PHP stand itself has a lot, has around like 200 or 300 errors with level nine. So it's not for everyone. You don't have to feel obligated to use it. And level nine is about limiting what can you do what can you do with mixed because up until level level eight, including level eight, PHP stand does not check anything on mixed. It considers the code that uh, uses mixed correct. And level nine limits the usefulness of mixed because you can't do anything with it except uh, pass it to another mixed because it's potentially potentially dangerous, dangerous operation. So in this example, uh, we are passing mixed to a method that requires an integer. So of course, if the mixed value is something else, your code uh, would possibly crash. So that's why it's reported on uh, level nine. I would, like to st I would like to stop for a while and let you know about a feature called the baseline. So who, who knows what, base what baseline is? Okay, a lot of, lot of hands, but not, not everyone. So um, 
what I strive for in my talks is that uh, you can immediately apply what you learned here. So you can go back to work tomorrow. Is it Thursday? Okay, so you can. Uh, you, will, you will be here at the conference. So no, so on Monday, you can go back to work on Monday, and you can immediately apply what you learn. So if I if I tell you about some uh, custom rules or more advanced options to uh, apply advanced analysis to your to your code and more stricter analysis, and you will go back to work and you will enable it and you will find out that uh, you get hundreds or thousands of errors. So you immediately turn it off and never think about it again. But what the baseline is, is that uh, if you want to increase your level, your rule level, or introduce new rules, but your code base has currently some violations, which you don't have, you don't have time to fix now, you can make them part of your baseline. So uh, baseline is just a configuration file with ignored errors, which uh, PHP stem will generate for you. And what it does is that only new errors after that point, where, when you generate the baseline, are reported as new. So you can uh, you can configure PHP stem really really strictly, and you can generate the baseline for the current errors. And if someone sends a new pull request to your code, uh, the pull request will be uh, evaluated by PHP stand with the stricter configuration because all of the existing errors are ignored and only the new ones introduced by the base by by the new code are going to be going to be reported and back to back to level 9 so if you if you decide to fight fight level 9 and try to try to win win the battle i'm going to give you some tips that you can use to uh, successfully successfully use level 9 and the following tips are not useful only for level level nine, but uh, you can always use them to improve to improve your code, even if you are using lower lower levels naturally. So the first obvious thing is use a more specific type rather than mixed. So PHP now has many many options, many many features to uh, express what your functions, what your methods do. And you can use native types in parameters, in retro types, even on properties. So I encourage you to, uh, to use them. And uh, for PHP stand specific types, you can write even a lot more in PHP docs. So how it usually goes with PHP, with PHP development is that the community invents uh, something some new concept, some new type, and start using it in uh, PHP docs, and then uh, PHP PHP developers come and try to convert it to be able to use it natively. So this is how usually the uh, circle circle of inventing new features goes goes like. So you can uh, write a lot of stuff in PHP docs. So you can write integer ranges. Uh, for example, if you are only if you don't want to accept the whole integer whole, whole integer range from PHP int main to PHP int max, but you are only, for example, interested in hours of the day, which means from zero to twenty three, you can use an integer range in PHP docs, and PHP then will check if you are only ever passing this this range this range there. Uh, you can tell you can tell PHP then what's in your what's what's in your arrays. You can tell PHP stand that you only accept, you only return non-empty arrays, and you can uh, you can mark class strings, which means uh, strings that contain a valid class name. You can use non-empty strings. An interesting interesting safety feature is a literal string, which means that if you are accepting some input, for example, for your SQL SQL queries, uh, you should type in literal string because it to be it's only ever going to accept a string that was written by a developer in the code base, in the code. Literal string isn't going, isn't going to be accepted, for example, from an HTTP request, from anywhere that's an unknown, unknown source. It's only ever going to accept the code that was written by the developer, for example, an SQL query. Uh, there's are, there are also array shapes. If you have a legacy code base, that uh, uses a lot of lot of array types with uh, specific specific keys. You can use array shapes to uh, be able to analyze them. Uh, you can also reference constants and class constants in your PHP docs, 
and you can also specify uh, what are your callables. So if you accept, accept a callable, the callable usually has some kind of signature. It accepts some parameters and returns some parameters. So you can write uh, this type in PHP doc with a specific uh, callable, callable structure, specific callback. You can read all about these advanced types in the official official documentation, right? I would like to think for a while about uh, this situation and how to how to approach it. So it's really great when you write uh, defensive code like this. You only want to accept positive integers. So when someone passes a negative integer into your into your method, you throw and you throw an exception. So uh, this way, it's really great that you are avoiding uh, some kind of errors. So that uh, negative negative integers and zero are not uh, the, your method body is not executed with negative negative integers. But uh, you are not actually avoiding runtime errors in your code because with this code, the static analyzer is happy even if you pass a negative integer in there. So you just return some kind of defensive code, but unexpected exceptions are still going to be thrown in runtime and end up in your error logs because someone can pass a negative integer in there. PHP stun is not going to report it, and you're going to have uh, exception thrown in runtime. Uh, assertion, assertion libraries that throw exception on your behalf are the same situation. It's great as a first step. But still, uh, you should do something that kind of that kind of uh, tries to avoid this error proactively. So I would like to encourage you to write uh, PHP doc types instead, because uh, if they are represented in signatures, the types will inevitably spread throughout your whole, throughout your whole application, because uh, the place which calls this foo function is also going to be forced to type its inputs as positive integers. Everywhere you call this function, you are going to be forced to use this type. So, uh, and it's uh, for a good for a good reason because PHP stem will tell you if you are not passing a positive integer in all these places. And of course, uh, this is only for static analysis and has no bearing on what happens in runtime. But I think it's quite fine because. Uh, other languages like TypeScript work work exactly the same way. So uh, in PHP we have it uh, really good because we also have a lot of type checks in runtime uh, because the language will not let us. If we have a native type, the language will not let us call uh, a method with the wrong type. But uh, other languages don't work like that, and the developers of those languages are also fine with that behavior. So. If you can get some extra safety thanks to more specific types, even if even if they are in PHP docs, I think it's a good thing for everyone. Of course, you can write uh, the specific PHP doc type, and you can still write the runtime check. And uh, if you are, I would um, this is this is fine if you are writing a library and cannot be sure that all of your consumers are also using static analysis. But, or, or also if you are on low, all, or low level, or if you have a lot of errors ignored. But if you have a closed, closed source code base that, on, that only you use, then I don't think that this, and if you are on a higher level, I don't think that you have to write these uh, runtime checks everywhere. You can just um, rely on PHP stand. Um, by default, PHP stand here is going to complain that this condition is always false because, of course, you've passed the positive integer there. But uh, you can configure it in such a way that it doesn't um, doesn't complain about these checks, and you can turn you can turn this off and write these extra runtime checks also. All right. Another thing that you should do when fighting level nine is that you're gonna have a lot of untyped data coming from JSON, because JSON decode simply returns uh, mixed. So you can, before you check what are the properties of, of the mixed type, so I would like to encourage you to use strongly type objects 
And I hear that this library is really great for that because it provides validation, it provides mapping to real objects, and it's compatible with static analysis tools like PHP and on sound. All right. Mm. Another situation that you can encounter with level nine is that you have a function that uh, accepts mixed and returns mixed based on the PHP docs. But what happens in reality is that it uh, returns the same time, the same the same type that it accepted that it accepted. So uh, you are not able to describe what's going on inside with using uh, union types or more specific types because it depends. The behavior depends on the parameter. So instead of mixed, you can use generics, which is an advanced feature. Who is familiar with generics? Okay, few few hands up. Unfortunately, we don't have time to go into generics today. So I would like to encourage you to watch my talk on YouTube on this topic, and you will find everything that there's to learn about about generics. So they are for. Uh, therefore, um, specifying what's going on inside your methods and functions in situations where the written type can somehow be inferred from the from the parameter type from the argument. Uh, one simple, one more simple scenario are conditional types. So, if your written type somehow depends on, on the parameter but it's not a one-to-one -one mapping, like in case of generics, but it's just some kind of uh, some kind of special condition. So if you have, for example, a parameter that decides if your function is going to return null or if it's going to throw in case of a non-existing non -existing object or some non-existing item or value, then you can write a conditional type and it's also going to inform PHP stand about what's going on inside. You might ask that this is this is all great for your own code, but what about vendor? So, what if I want to fix something in vendor in third-party libraries, or if I want to introduce more specific types there? And uh, you can use a feature called the stub files. So you can you can overwrite wrong third-party PHP docs for uh, usage with PHP stand if you write a stub file which looks like a normal PHP file, and the namespace and the class name and the method names must match with the original. And the only thing that PHP stand is interested in the stub file are the PHP docs. So you can override, you can override them, and you can write the more, more specific types and generic types and uh, conditional, conditionals there. All right, so I promised you maximum strictness. And up until now, we were just talking about what PHP stand does out of the box. So I would like to deliver, deliver on the promise of more, more stricter behavior. So now we are going into a more opinionated area. So it's no longer it's no longer just about bugs, but it's also about suspicious code that you might want to rewrite, but the code might not be exactly wrong in the first in the first place. It just might be something questionable or uh, non-readable or stuff or stuff like that. So strict rules are going to enforce you to express exactly what you want by, by your code. One point of the package is to just uh, switch the defaults on some options that are available in PHP stand core. So here's part of the config file that's going to be used once you install the package. But there are also other custom rules inside the package too. So you can use these options separately. Uh, without the strict rules package, and they are documented on the website, so don't don't worry. You can you can read all about them. So the first thing that strict rules will enforce you to do is to have only booleans in your in your conditions. So let's say that we accept a nullable, nullable string, and then we then we write if dollar s. So what did the developer mean by if dollar s? Did they just want to get rid of the null, null part? Did they just uh, did they also want to get rid of the non-empty string? Did they also want to get rid of string that contains zero because that also that's also false? <laughs> so it's not really obvious from this piece of code what uh, the developer wanted to do. 
So by only boolean in conditions, it enforces you to write code like this. So we want to eliminate null, and we want to eliminate empty strings. And uh, I really like writing explicit conditions like this. Another thing that is going to disallow is the empty construct. So there are several problems with empty. It returns true for an undefined variable. That's the first part, that the empty is roughly not is set or is set to equal signs false or two equal signs false. So it returns true for an undefined variable. So an undefined variable in an empty construct is not going to throw any notice, any warning, nothing. It's just going to return true. And so it hides potential errors in your code. Another problem is this two equal sign because the semantics of the two equal sign are really messy in PHP. So this is a completely random mess that <laughs> it's it's really hard to memorize this to to use uh, to use logic like this. So I would like to encourage you to rather use three three equal signs. So which means no no empty no empty construct. And three equal signs are exactly as it should be. The only true values are along the diagonal only for the same only between the same types. So this is completely predictable. And I really, really like to use three cosines instead. Uh, what you might not know, what you might not know, is that some functions in PHP use uh, the two cosines semantic semantics by default. So if you ask about if some value is in array, it's going to match for everything that's here, not just not just here. But you can opt in to the more specific behavior by third parameter true. So this is also something that strict rules will tell you about. Uh, another similar function that uh, has this parameter is array search, I, I think. All right. Another thing that brings uh, PHP closer to compiled languages is that it disallows using loop variables outside of loops. What does it mean? So by default, PHP doesn't complain about this. Because you are accepting a non-empty array, and uh, you are iterating over it, so you know that the for each will run at least once. Which means that below the for each, the variable v is going to be defined, and it's going to contain the last element of the array. So uh, it might be the developer's intent that they wanted to do this, and they wanted to access the, the last element of the array below the, below the for each. But it's as likely that it's an error and they wanted to use some different variable that was already defined beforehand. So strict rules, strict rules report the situation, but PHP stand by default doesn't. But I think it's really, really useful to not do this, not do this in real code. All right, uh, this is all dynamic code, yeah. Uh, PHP allows us to do some crazy, some crazy things like access a variable by its name, like use two, use two uh, dollar signs to access a variable dynamically. You might even use more, more dollar signs, but that's already too, too meta. <laughs> or you can call a method dynamically like this, but uh, you are running into uh, some problems. Like you might call a method that has some arguments, but PHP stand doesn't know that. So it's, it's not able to report anything on a dy dynamic, calls, dynamic calls like this. Strict rules uh, will require you to call the parent constructor because uh, I think that object, object encapsulation is an important concept. And what I mean by that is that uh, you should not be able to break internal state of an object after creating it. And we usually achieve that by using private properties and public methods to only allow valid operations with that object. But not everyone realizes that uh, extending a class is also a usage of a class that should honor enca encapsulation. So developer of the parent class usually doesn't think that it's going to be created without calling the constructor. So it's going to be created broken broken by default. So that's why uh, strict rules will going to require you to call the parent constructor as well. 
and other languages also also require that. There are also some extra options in PHP 10 that aren't turned on even by PHP centric tools. So you can find about them in the documentation, and, and I'm going to I'm going to also list them here. So the first one it is check uninitialized properties. It's false by default, and you can turn it on. So uh, properties with native types that you can use, say in PHP 7.4, have an uninitialized state. So before the first assignment, they are uninitialized, and then you can't you can access them. And if you first call a getter before calling the setter on such an object, it's uh, going to throw throw this error. And this code might be fine. I'm also, I'm trying to look at it objectively and um, un, un, in an un, unopinated way. Because the developer might know that the user will always call the setter before the getter, so this is not reported by default. But if you turn on this option, it is going, it's going to require you to set the value in the constructor so that the object is never, it's never possible to have it in a broken state. And uh, yeah, and I'm running kind of an kind of an experiment. So in PHP 8.1. Uh, you can mark properties at, as read-only. So PHP doesn't require you to uh, set them in the constructor, but PHP then does by default. Even without this option, if you have a read-only property, it's going to require you to set it in the constructor. As I said, it's just an experiment about what people, what people think about this, because my assumption is that uh, when you use read-only properties, your intention is to write an immutable object. So the requirement to set it in the constructor makes makes sense for me. Another option is to check two byte version types. And I see the irony that the option almost doesn't fit on the slide. <laughs> and it's it's too wide. So by default, PHP stand reports this for private private methods and functions. And you can also turn it on for public and protected methods. So it's going to tell you if your return type is too wide, which means that it contains the union contains something that isn't actually returned. So you can probably uh, delete some some dead code based on the handling of the extra handling of the extra extra values. The reason why I'm not doing this by default is that you might have some subclasses that actually will use these uh, extra types that aren't returned by parent classes but it's not that common in practice. All right, uh, one more topic that I have are exceptions. So exceptions can bring an additional additional dimension to your type safety in, in your application. And in most applications today, they go, go largely, largely unchecked. And what usually happens is that you forget to handle uh, an exception. So instead of gracefully handling an error state, your application crashes, and it looks looks like this. So the following following options, following settings, following rules are a completely optional part that you can turn on, because every code base is different. Every code base's approach to, to exceptions is different. And for some people, it's important, and for others, it's not. So it's completely optional. And the point is to avoid Uncode exceptions and instead provide users with a better error message if you are handling them. And error handling can be non trivial in complex applications because it might not be just about uh, posting some, some message, showing some message to the user, but it might also be just uh, also about um, rolling, rolling back started, tra started transactions, maybe revert, reverting some data, cleaning up after, after yourself. So it's good. To focus not just not just on the happy path, but also on the uh, on the error handling. This is how you can throw. This is how you can mark functions and methods as throwing uh, in PHP using PHP docs using the at throws sign. And um, the Logic is that there are two types of exceptions, checked and unchecked. 
custom business exceptions that are expected to happen and should be handled by the applications are, are checked. So these are going to be thrown because the code is somehow reachable from the UI or from the API. If the user opens your application in two different tabs and tries to click around a bit, uh, they might, um, they might uh, cause some kind of exception like that to be thrown. And these are the ones that should be communicated by your at throw stacks, and that should be handled somewhere in an upper, upper layer uh, for, uh, for your error, error handling. And on the other hand, unchecked exceptions represent programming or infrastructure problems. So these aren't supposed to be caught. I think it doesn't make any sense to, call, to catch type error because it should be avoided, not, not handled afterwards. Or, for example, parse errors in, SQ, in SQL queries are also something that isn't, isn't to be expected and handled. And, for example, if your database is down, you need to fix your database. You, can't, you cannot code your way around this. So that's why we have checked and unchecked exceptions. And every, as I said, every code base is different. So PHP then offers flexible, flexible options for exception categorization. So by default, all exceptions are checked and you need to write a config to exclude some of them and mark them as unchecked. So this is essentially a block list. So either you can evaluate the exception by, by its name with a regular expression, or you can mark the class and all its child classes also as unchecked. And you can also flip it. And if you start using these options that start with checked instead of unchecked, it's an allow list. So you can mark all of them as unchecked first, and you can just you can just write the list of those that you want to you want to mark mark as checked. And also it's completely flexible. So that's a type of an extension that you can uh, evaluate exception cut ex exception category, whether it's checked or unchecked, with uh, your custom logic. So for example, this is this allows you to consider an exception checked on one layer of your application, for example, by the class name or the namespace, and for other layers as unchecked. So for example, your infrastructure layer, your database layer can consider um, an exception that uh, informs you about inserting a duplicate row as checked, but on, the, on your business layer, on your domain layer, it should be unchecked. So this is what you can do with uh, your completely custom logic using using this interface. And if you implement this interface and implement your logic, you can register it in your configuration file like this. All right, so now we have our exceptions categorized, but PHP actually still doesn't report anything about it. So we have to turn on some rules about this. So the first rule is that checked exception must be handled or documented, which means you, if you call some, if you call some method that throws a checked exception, you have to announce it in your PHP doc in, in, in the throw stack, or you need to cache it and you need to somehow handle it. So this is what missing reporting missing checked exception in throws does, and this is how the error message will look like if you if you forgot to handle such an exception. So it's going to tell you that function throws checked exception, but it's missing from a PHP doc at throw stack. And another rule is that uh, you have two white throw type, which means that uh, you are announcing that you are throwing some kind of exception in your throw stack, but it's not actually true. So you have, uh, again, you will get an error message that will tell you about this. So. What does missing at throws mean above a function? So by default, PHP style is configured that any function can throw any exception because uh, this reflects the current state of PHP applications where exceptions are not documented at all because if if there's no tool that will that will force you to that will force you to check these check these then uh, you have no way of knowing of guaranteeing that your at throw stacks will be will be correct so this is the default behavior if you don't have any throw stacks uh, the function is considered to throw anything you can turn this off and here's a comparison how it works so on the left is the default behavior 
a function without any throw stacks can throw an exception. If you want to, with this setting, with implicit throws set to true, if you want to inform PHP stand that your function doesn't throw anything, you need to use add throws void, which is a special syntax to tell PHP stand about that uh, nothing is thrown. And if you set implicit throws to false, a function without any PHP doc will not throw anything. And throws void means means the same thing, but you don't have to, you no longer have to have to use it. So this is, uh, I would say this is really brutal brutal setting, similar to level nine, because you will realize how much stuff in your code is not is not documented, and you will see this kind of message a lot with implicit throws set to false. All right, that's not all. There's also uh, extensive extensive library or third-party third party packages, third-party extensions. So this is just an example of a few of them. And you can also search, search for more on packages this way. So when you write PHP stand, on the right side, there's a filter, PHP stand extension. And you can find more, more than 100 there. So I encourage you to go, go through this list. But if you if you don't find what you are looking for, you can also write your own custom rules. And I'm finding out that more and more people are starting doing that because uh, no one else knows. Uh, no one no one else rather than you knows about what's going on in your code base. What are the tricky situations that should be that should be checked automatically by your CI pipeline? instead of a person, instead of a human during a menu code review. So you can find a lot of situations uh, like that. And you can start by reading the official documentation on the website. And it's not that hard as, as it looks. I really encourage you to write some custom rules. All right. One more, one more tip. Always, please, always use the latest version of PHP Stan. I I am releasing releasing a new new versions several several times a month, sometimes even several times a week. So the latest version is always is always the best one naturally. It's just software development works like that, right? So I encourage you to always stay on the latest version, read read, read the release notes, and if you are if you have a closed closed project and you use a composer log file, if you have a composer log file in in your Git repository, uh, you can use. Uh, version version range like this, and you should use something like dependabot or a renovate bot to update your dependencies regularly. And if you don't have a composer file, if you are, for example, writing an open source library, you should pin to a specific version in your composer JSON, and you should also use the dependabot or renovate to update update automatically uh, your dependencies. And that applies not just to PHP stand, but to each of your each of your dependencies. Because updating dependencies is like visiting a dentist. So if you if you do it regularly, you are going to be fine. But if you do it only once every ten years, it's going to hurt a lot. So that's my that's my recommendation. And one more one more final thing is something called bleeding edge. Familiar with bleeding edge setting in PHP stand. No one, okay, <laughs> one person, okay. And so uh, I don't work on a major version in a separate branch. If I work on something that I want to be included in PHP 2.0, I put it in the I put it in the package, I put it in the code that's currently released, but it's hidden, the, behavior, the new behavior, the new rules are hidden behind a feature flag. Feature, uh, feature flag. And this is a way to for you to enable this new behavior, these new rules, before everyone else gets them in a new major version with this uh, special config. So I need to warn you that your build will definitely fail more often as I, ena as I enable new rules for bleeding edge users. But when PHP 2.0 comes, comes out, you will not have to catch up with a lot of stuff because you will be ready for the next version. It's uh, it's actually very very similar to the to the rule levels. So uh, if you want to if you want to if you feel like I, like you want to be an early adopter, I really encourage you to use the bleeding bleeding case setting. Right. So if you if you like PHP stand, if you use it every day, feel free to use GitHub sponsors to send a few bucks my way. I will be really grateful for that. 
And that's that's all from me today. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, now, now it works. All right. So it looks like there are no questions. I actually have one uh, about okay. the baseline feature. Okay. Uh, is it like smart like Git? Like it takes into account lines changing in a file? Uh, no, it's not that smart because that would be uh, really expensive to do. If you would generate baseline, for example, like six months ago, I would have to compute the difference between mm -hmm. now and six months ago. So it works... The precision precision is number of errors with this message in this file. So, oh, if, okay. so for example, if you have six errors with this error message on the, in this file, and you add a seventh one, it's going to report one one new error. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a it's a very nice approach. Like it's much simpler than one. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Any other questions for Andre? Oh, there's one. I'm scared. <laughs> Again. Uh, is it, yeah, it's working. Um, two things. One, positive int and templated integer types. Is positive int being phased out and should we move away from it? And the second one is, what about inheritance and throwables? If you have throwables declared at interface level and any implementation, you declare more throwables. How does PHP stand behave on that? Okay, about inheritance and, and throwables. Uh, could be covariant, right? It's similar to return types. Yeah, there's currently no no check to to check that. So in theory, uh, implementation could right now PHP stand would not report if your implementation throws more exceptions than the interface. But it's just a feature feature request to happen. There's there there can be another simple rule to be added that can that can enable this. And the first question was something about gen. Just it's just an alias. It's no, no, no. It's just an alias. <laughs> Another question here. Thank you. Um, last year we started a new project, and we started with level eight on the spot, and it was a huge mindfuck the first two weeks. But after that, it helped us a lot. But it almost found anything we. Did right wrong, so you uh, before I started to run the program, I started to run a PHP stand, found almost anything, run the program worked. Um, here, here's the question: You told us how to fight the devil, level nine. Will there ever be a level ten? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't plan to have like ten, ten more levels or something. I would rather redesign them. I would like to have them work differently because right now it's just a co how they look today is just a coincidence how I uh, developed the rules when I started use when I started developing PHP stand. So it was quite several years before I got to level eight or level nine, and it just currently shows how I started developing PHP stand. So I start the rules on level zero are just the first ones that I wrote. So now with the hindsight. Uh, I would like to redesign the levels in such a way that it reports the most useful stuff first. So if, for example, today, if you have a string coming from a native type and you are passing it somewhere, an integer is also with the native type, it's not going to be reported until level five, which is not really that great. So I would, instead of uh, slicing the rules how they are sliced today, I would rather have the severity of the error to influence how soon it is reported. So that's something I am thinking about. But in a continuous delivery fashion, I just wouldn't make the switch one day. I would probably start implementing them in a way that makes uh, possible to use the old levels alongside the new levels. So for example, I would name them something like X1, X2, or something like that, so that you can you can test them as as I'm developing them. Yeah, but that's just an idea at my hand right at this moment. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, first, thank you for this awesome tool. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, is there a way to use the extensions uh, with the far version of uh, PHP Stun? Wait, I which mean, version? I use the far version, not the composer installed in Band or PHP yeah, Stun. Yeah, okay? yeah, it works. So, uh, the PHP Stun slash PHP Stun package is actually the far file. Yeah. So it's, it's distributed like that. So uh, there's actually no hurdle, no problem. If you just uh, install this package in your in your project, like a local local composer dependency, there are go there are not going to be any conflicts. It's not going to install anything anything else besides the PHP stand far package, and you can use extensions extensions with that. But for for example, you mentioned the, uh, to include a new configuration dot uh, neon file from the vendor directory, and. Uh, so in my case, uh, using the far version, I uh, I mean, PHP Stun is not in the vendor directory, okay, right? Yeah, yeah, I see. So if you, I'm I'm saying that if you want to use extensions, just install the package as it's supposed to be, because there's no downside, there's no downside to it to have it in dev in dev dependencies. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm wondering if we should use Psalm next to PHP Stun or should we just migrate to PHP Stun or other users that use PHP yeah, Stun so, next to Psalm? Yeah, so you don't have to be afraid to ask me about Psalm because comp competition is a weird thing in open source, right? So we are actually friendly with the maintainers of Psalm and uh, we help each other, so you don't have to be afraid to ask, ask about it. And what uh, every one of us usually answer when given a question like this is that you should use both. It's just, it's, com it's implemented completely differently, and it's just a different set of eyes on your code. So in some cases, PHP might, might find something extra, some extra problem in your code. In other cases, it's going to be sound. So if you have if you have the time if you the courage you, you should use both. Uh, usually, uh, handling exception uh, inside the callables is uh, gives uh, many troubles. Do you plan to give any support to the text exception inside callables or anonymous function? Depends. Depends what you what you want to solve by that. So I'm I'm not sure. So you maybe maybe just open an issue and ex explain your situation. What you want to what you want to do. I'm not sure if we are going to be able to understand that without a piece of code. What you want to achieve. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, time is up. So we're up for a break. Give another round of applause to Andre. Thank you. 